welcome back. Uh, my name is Lorraine Pugh and this is my video series um, mostly about um, hand dyed yarns and crochet and occasionally a little bit of knitting but um, I'm definitely better at crocheting than I am knitting. Um, you can find me on Instagram as Lorraine Pugh Designs. I'm also on Facebook I've got a Facebook page called Lorraine Pew Designs and a Facebook group called Lorraine Pew Designs Project Bag. Um, I'm on Ravelry as Lorraine Pew, and there's also a group for this video series um, uh, where there are show notes. I also have a, a blog and that's LorrainePewDesigns.blogspot.com and I also put some free patterns on there and show notes and other bits and bobs like other podcasters that I enjoy um, also all the yarns that are shown in my videos I put photos of those with a description of um, where you can find them and and yeah all sorts of things like that um, so I think I'll just get right into uh, works in progress um, the last two weeks my husband's been home from Africa he works in Africa so um, we've had lots of family time, him, my little two-year-old boy and myself, so um, I've not done a lot of crochet and when I have done crochet um, I've been undoing a lot because I'm currently working on a design of my own um, and I had an initial vision and that obviously is growing as, the, as, as I go with it, um, but sometimes I go a bit off track and so I've done undone a lot of it and then redone bits here and there um, but also I'm going to be putting beads on it and I I couldn't really carry on with it until I would got the beads so uh, a lot of the last couple of weeks as well I've been resting when I can because I've not been feeling 100% but you know I'm fine um, so what I've been working on, I'm only going to be quite abstract with what I'm going to show you. I don't want to give too much away, um, but this is this is the design so far. It's a sort of a scarf, but it's sort of a hybrid scarf shawl thing. Um, I really can't wait to show you more, and hopefully it'll be finished and written up um, by the next time I speak to you, which will be in a couple of weeks' time. Um, so the yarns that I'm using for this are this one, which is called Black Hole by Dye for Yarn or Dye for Wool. Um, where is the card for that one? Is somewhere hiding. Um, here it is. Dye for Yarn, and it's called Black Hole. And this is their. Um, let's see if I can look at. This is the Merino, Superwash Merino Silk Blend, and it's lovely to work with, really, really nice. Um, okay, now these two yarns are by My Mama Knits. This greeny one with the red flecks in that reminds me of Shadowmere from, um, if you play Skyrim, he's the black stallion with the glowing red eyes. Um, that's by My Mama Knits. That green one is called Kelpie. See that? And then the grey with the yellow flecks is again by my mum and it's and that one's called Birken Hair. And for this project, as I mentioned with the beads, I ordered two, two colour of beads, sorry, I'm trying to get rid of that glare which is coming from both sides because I've got my windows curtains open. Um, try and show you them in the pots there, these lovely salt pots that are acacia wood that I got from Tiger. Anyway, I digress. Those are the colour beads that I got from Maya Honey on Etsy um, or MayaHoneyBeads.com and because I'm going to be doing this design in another pair of colours I'll show you those now actually. I ordered some more beads for that, but that's this one, which is called Colour Theory, and this is um, by Hand Dyed by Kate. And this is on her yak base. So although she's used a rainbow of colours, because of the yak 
the greyness of the yak, it kind of makes it like a more muted autumnal tone. And that's her her old logo. She has since changed it, but there's the information there. You can see that. And I'm going to be pairing that with originally I was going to pair it with a purple with a gold stellina, which I showed you last week. Now I'm definitely going to pair those two colourways together. Um, I've got quite a few skeins of this yarn um, because I'm greedy. But I did order this instead. This is by Dye for, Dye for Yarn or Dye for Wool. Again, they're uh, merino silk blend. And I just think it goes so wonderfully with the sort of raspberry tones in that. And the beads I ordered to go with this pairing. Ready, wait for it, wait for it. Gorgeous gold beads. So, what I'm going to do is show you just how amazing these gold beads look on this red yarn because they will be on the red yarn. Now, this colourway of red yarn is called Overripe Raspberry, and I think those golden beads as a trim would just be lovely because there are sort of hints of gold in this because of the yellow that's been put on it. So, I'm really looking forward to seeing how that comes out and funnily enough I even started the second the second uh, project the same same design but the second one um, in this because I was so eager to see how it worked up but um, I should really be more methodical and just finish this one first because um, well, I'm just impatient really, but also I need to make sure I know exactly what I'm doing with this one before I start the new one, but um, it's coming together so wonderfully and uh, I've got it all written out that it's whether or not the, when I come to doing the border that that works because there is a slightly intricate bit on there. Um, but it's been really, really fun to do. It's been really, really fun and it's definitely my niche, making things. And I find... Um, I find a, diff a massive difference in making something and designing something purely for the sake of it. Um, like when I get an idea, it's it just comes, and then I think, oh, and I could do that, and suddenly it's like a waterfall. When I really get into it and just let it, let the idea flow, it's um, it's it's a lovely process. It's like a little journey for me. Um, Whereas, like in the past, if someone said, oh, I want this, I want it to be that colour and that, can you make it? The passion for me just isn't really there, although I'm happy to, to make that item for someone or even come up with a design for someone for, for things like that. Uh, I just don't think it's, um, the, the, I don't know, there's just no passion behind it for me. And one other girl I was talking to was um, talking about when she gets a commission for like magazines or books, um, they tend to, um, it, it, it feels more pressured when you have to work for a deadline and you've got this quite specific brief. Um, it's just not as freeing. And actually, at the end of this video, I will digress a little bit and go into um, a sort of um, a more... Well, I'll just talk about that a little bit more. Um, and I'll, I've also got a book recommendation, actually, that I'm, I, will, I will mention. So that is that. I think I've mentioned who those yarns are by as well, yeah. Um, okay, I'm drinking today this gorgeous, it's called Cypress Mountain Tea. And it's these green buds. Now this one is organic. I got it from um, a garden centre that's local to me. It's uh, just down in Coral Bay um, at the bottom of the village that I live in and it's called New Roots, and the fella there, uh, he said that there's only a couple of places which this plant is available from in Cyprus. Um, a lot of the mountain tea you get over here, they'll act they actually um, get it from Greece, So, um, but this one's actually organic from Cyprus. I believe he got it himself, and you get loads in, in the pot that he gives you. He says you can get about 20 servings in, 20 servings in one pot, but I'll get more than that because I, I quite like my herbal teas to be quite delicate. I don't let them sit for too long. Um, but the funny thing with this is that I, I only use a few buds and it looks so pretty when it's in the mug. And I can't show you because I'll obviously risk spilling um, tea over my yarns. But the buds are even in a little... They're just so lovely. Let's see what 
bit of a maybe. Um, and they swell and open up a little bit when you pour the water on. Um, and literally, I only use about that much, about four four buds, and I think there are about four on there that you get them. Oh, see, look at that one. It's so pretty. So lovely. Let me get closer. There. And um, but I can let that sit in the in the hot water for until I finish the tea, and it doesn't taste too strong at all. In fact. I find with a lot of herbal teas, um, I don't have the tea bag in for that long because I find they can get bitter. This one doesn't. It's really, really lovely. So um, if you live in Cyprus, then I can highly recommend that. But um, I think what I will do is at some stage do a giveaway. Um, I didn't want to do a giveaway just for the sake of doing a giveaway. I only want to do a giveaway if I've actually got some really lovely things that um, I can share with you. And obviously I've got some lovely yarns, I might make some minis up. But this is such a lovely thing that you, you really can't get anywhere else in the world really, other than Cyprus, and in fact two places in Cyprus. So I'll, um, I'll give away some of this Cyprus Mountain Tea I think in the future. Um, but yeah, that'll probably be in the new year. Because in the new year, everything, all the dust will have settled. Because if you've watched my other videos, you'll know that my mum and I work in my mum's shop. But that is coming to an end soon. She's actually closing down. Um, it's just been a successful business, but she's ready to retire now. And people have said to me, you know, why don't you take the shop on? It's such a shame um, to, for this to come to an end. And while originally I sort of thought that I would end up taking on the shop, I definitely feel that I've gone in a different direction and I want to really pursue my dreams and I will I will go more into that a little bit at the end of the video. Um, so that's that. Um, what else? Acquisition wise, so I mentioned these lovely little bowls from Tiger, these salt bowls. They, they are perfect for beading. Um, but also from Tiger, these yarn bowls. And my mum got this one for me. My mum buys me so many lovely things. I'm very lucky. Um, so a lovely yarn bowl. And it's I've never had a yarn bowl before. I always thought thought they were a bit of a luxury. So um, I'm very lucky. Um, but my mum also bought me a weaving loom. And, and this is made from wood and metal. So all natural materials as well. And this packaging I will use probably to pack maybe a giveaway in, yeah, we'll see. Um, and I'm really looking forward to making some wall hangings. I, I went on Pinterest and I looked up um, weaving loom projects and there were some lovely sunset ones, abstract sunsets and abstract mountain scenery. And um, a few of them look quite Navajo. I think they've got that um, inspiration. So um, really looking forward to making some of those. Um, not enough hours in a day not enough hours in a day so that's that I am currently well I'm still weaving in the ends and sewing up my crozy memories blanket and I can't really show you much but it is all laid out on this table in front of me um, and the the joining method that I'm using for that is the we've kind of coined the term the anti-tilt zipper join um, a lady called Margaret Evans, who is a member, um, she's in the, I think it's the Sheepies um, Crochet Long International Group. She came up with the, the method after trying to follow Esther's video tu tutorial. Um, but she found that her, her joining was slightly tilted. And I find the same is probably how we hold the yarn or our tension or something. Um, but she's come up with a really good join there and you'll find that on my blog because I asked for her permission to ask if I could share it and share her name and she said that was fine so um, uh, that's up on my blog as well um, and I also highly recommend you joining that um, Sheepies Cow group on Facebook um, because all the different people on there just, just looking at the, their projects it's um, it's all mostly about the last dance on the beach um, but all the different stitch patterns and things that you can see and it's really inspiring just seeing other people's work and um, when people come across a problem everyone helps to um, give their advice and it's just a lovely group to be in and it's inspiring all the time um, so I highly recommend joining that group as well um, 
Otherwise, this will generally be quite a short and sweet episode, but the thing that I did want to talk about is this book recommendation, which is really nothing to do with crochet or knitting, but it's more about sort of maintaining a happy a happy life. Um, my best friend actually introduced me to it, and it is this. It is A New Earth by Eckhart Tolle. Um, and I appreciate that since I've, since I've interacted with people in this community, um, the knitting, crochet community, and generally arts and crafty sort of communities, um, I've seen a lot of um, people that suffer from anxiety. Um, now, I'm, I'm quite lucky in that I don't really suffer from anxiety, but I definitely like to... Um, when I'm feeling a bit low I tend to analyse it and try and figure out how I can get myself out of it and um, this book is fantastic for that and it's also very inspiring like if I even just when I wake up some mornings I like to open the book and turn to a page and read a, read a bit in there because it sort of if you're having a tough day it sort of helps well it helps me to be more empathetic with others and um, it's just, a, it's just a really good book, spiritually speaking. Um, and there's a few bits in that that I can really relate to Cross. And I've made lots of notes in this book, but I thought I need to sort of consolidate it a little bit. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to read an excerpt from this. Um, and for me, it's, I can really relate to it in regard to sort of my new journey of leaving, uh, well, my mum's shop closing. And rather than doing craft for business and for money, doing it purely for the sake of, of doing it. And I've found, and if you, if you like to do designs as well, or you like to make things, I find if you, really, if you really have to try and think of it and overcome the problem and really put so much energy into it, and it can feel like you're banging your head against a brick wall, if you just stop and take a step back and just sort of allow the ideas to flow to you when they're ready to come to you, I really find it... Um, work is so much better that way and the final product is so much better and it's much less stressful if you just give yourself a bit of a break and, um, and when you've got the right intention to, to make something or in fact sometimes no intention at all just doing it for the sake of doing it and there's a really good paragraph in here there are so many good paragraphs but the one that I really related to is this I'm just going to read this out and it's page 210 um, and Eckhart Tolle says in each person's life there comes a time when he or she pursues growth and expansion on the level of form this is when you strive to overcome limitations such as physical weakness or financial scarcity when you acquire new skills and knowledge or through creative action bring something new into this world that is life enhancing for yourself as well as others this may be a piece of music or a work of art a book, a service you provide a function you perform, a business or organisation that you set up or make a vital contribution to. When you are present, when your attention is fully in the now, that presence will flow into and transform what you do. There will be quality and power in it. You are present when what you are doing is not primarily a means to an end, for example money, prestige or winning, but fulfilling in itself when there is joy and aliveness in what you do. And I really, that really struck a chord with me because I thought it's so true. Um, whenever I've, you know, whenever you, you do things for, to make money or for business or, um, I don't know, to, to, to try and make yourself feel better, it, it's, it's not always the healthiest way forward. And I find that my best work comes from when I'm just enjoying crocheting and just relaxed and it's just I just think a happier way to be and um, there's a couple of other sentences actually in here and also there are a few of the quotes from this book really helps me with this design and the coming up with a name for this design and I will go into that in the next episode a bit more but again this one will be a, a short and sweet one and um, in a couple of weeks time when this is finished um, hopefully I'll have made some progress with my Hotel of Bees shawl as well, um, which I don't 
think I've shown you yet, actually. But I'll show you that in a minute. I'm just going to read some more from here. Um, it says here, you become most powerful in whatever you do. If the action is performed for its own sake rather than as a means to protect, enhance or conform to your role identity. Um, you are totally focused on the situation. You become one with it. You don't try to be anybody in particular. Um, but the, the bit that relates, um, that I could relate to with regard to this design. Um, this design will actually be called the undefined. And uh, going back to people, ha people having um, judgments of me, um, that people being quite surprised when they hear that I crochet because they didn't expect it. They thought it would be, um, you know, that people that crochet... Um, uh, elderly ladies that sit rocking in a in a corner when actually no people that like um, rock music and cooking and um, you know they can like crochet too so I was trying to steer away from the the stigma um, of people thinking crochet is a bit mundane um, and so this bit um, out of this book is on page 109 and it says give up defining yourself to yourself or to others you will come to life and don't be concerned with how others define you when they define you they are limiting themselves so it's their problem and i just think it's a really good feel good book if you're ever feeling like you're doubting yourself or um, struggling um it's a really good book to read sometimes there are paragraphs where i have to reread several times because it can get quite deep and in depth um so those ones I do, that's, you know, I do have to reread it. But something that I actually realise I haven't shown you is um, some other yarn that I acquired. Um, now, here is a shawl that I absolutely adore. I've um, stalked everyone's projects on uh, Ravelry and on Instagram. Instagram, the projects that are on there are great. And this is called the Hotel of Bees Shawl. By Christina Haddering. Look at the lovely colours she uses in that. A really nice honeycomb colour, cream and grey. Um, Christina Haddering goes by the name A Spoonful of Yarn as well. Um, but although I love those colours, they'd certainly suit my mum. They would. I don't really feel that they're they suit me as well. So I went for much richer tones. Those, these, oh, sorry, I got a bit too excited then. These gorgeous colours. Now, let me just try and make it so you can see them a bit better. That's it. A bit richer than that, actually. If I can get rid of some of this glare. I won't be able to get rid of some of this glare. But these colours, that's a better representation. These are, again, all by Dye for Yarn. This one, they're all um, merino sport weight as well. This colourway is called uh, Too Hard Butter Cookie. And um, it's lovely, sort of definite honey caramel colour. Um, really gorgeous. And this one, which is called Burnt Cinnamon Roll. Really warm, sort of reddish brown, I suppose. Reddish, reddish brown. And then this one, which is more cool brown like a like a almost like a dark chocolate brown and that's called boiling cacao beans or boiling cacao um, and I just think together they will be lovely for that the honeycomb effect uh, I definitely think I'll need to use this in between use this um, butter cookie color in between those just to break them up a bit but even then then together I just think that could be lovely. I was really tempted to order some beads actually to go with these, but I was very good and I thought, no, I won't. I'm not going to do any beading, not on this one. I just follow Christina's guide and just stick to the yarn. But um, that's a problem I have sometimes when I go on Etsy and I see either an, if it's an indie dyer or um, a bead supplier or stitch marker supplier, I go on with the intention of getting one or two things, but they just, oh, they're inspiring, aren't they, those shops on Etsy? Because you see how they've used it or you just suddenly have all these new ideas. And I honestly um, really feel that I can't keep up with all my ideas. Um, and that's one reason I'm quite excited about my mum's shop closing because I will finally um, 
be able to sort of fulfill my my all, all the designs that I want to do um, because genuinely over the last couple of weeks I've I've not done a lot of crochet at all um, out of out of choice as well as just out of having a lot more of other things to do like family related things and and working as well and um, feeling a bit groggy maybe with the change of seasons I, I don't know but um, so also actually I will mention um, with my aim of trying to live um, a more simple life and and using more natural materials and composting more all all of these um, all of these things to be kinder to the environment um, suddenly I was thinking of all these other things that are going to be beneficial once the shop closes like I'll be able to walk my son to and from nursery every day um, or the days that he goes anyway because at the minute it feels like in the mornings once he up when he wakes up which is about when the sun rises basically um, and once we've had breakfast once we've walked the dog once we've watered all the plants and and you know tidied up and things there um, it's been really quite a fine line I could probably walk him and have time but it's the walking back to get then get the car to drive to work whereas I won't be doing that I'll just be able to walk him to and from nursery I'll even get back home in time to do um, perhaps even more podcasting really um, and doing more of my designs all day so fingers crossed um, I'll be able to do this full time uh, that is just such a big dream for me and I'm very lucky to have a husband that's supporting me in that so I'm very grateful for that um, but also the fact that I won't be using my car um, obviously I'll use it to do certain things like I know there are certain things like if I need to collect something from the post office in um, town that's about a 20 minute drive so I have to use the car then but otherwise things like fruit and veg um, general shopping um, it's all within walking distance here, living in this village in Cyprus, in Paya. Um, so I'm very lucky um, in that sense. Um, so yeah, I'm really, really excited for... Um, well, it's starting now really anyway. Like I walked him into nursery this morning because um, it's my day off. And um, yeah, so I just, I've got, I'm so excited about it all. Um, so next year, 2017, will be... I'll be fully in the, you know, getting settled into my new lifestyle. So that's really exciting. Um, okay, well, to save to save you all from listening to me waffle on any more, I think I'll stop it about here. Um, hope you enjoyed this episode. I know it probably wasn't as crochet as it could be, um, but I hope you enjoyed it nonetheless. And uh, I'll catch up with you all on Instagram and maybe Facebook too. Um, and Ravelry as well. Um, so happy crocheting and or knitting and or yarn squishing to face as a lot of people do. You just can't just you can't help it can you? It's just it's that test you have to do like oh what could I make like a scarf or a shawl and just squidging yarn to you and um, my mum and I, I might have mentioned this before but my mum and I call it Pinterest sick it's that feeling of like when you go on Pinterest and suddenly you get really inspired and all these ideas come to you and you start getting like excited and that like butterflies in your stomach and then you start to feel sick and then you're like oh I don't know if you get that might maybe just me and my mum but um, it's it's kind of a lovely feeling and you just want to surround yourself with all things crafty and lovely um, so anyway I don't I digress again so take care everyone have a lovely two weeks and Keep watching on Instagram as um, my husband's back in Africa now, so I'll be crocheting a lot more in the evenings and um, and be showing you my progress with my latest design, um, The Undefined. So uh, take care, everyone, and speak to you soon. Have a lovely two weeks. Bye.